¿Qué es la que hay? And welcome one more week to Music Mayhem. This, as always, is YOLO, J-O-L-O-W-X. And I'm just happy to be here. We are on the season. We are on the holidays. We are, uh, I don't know, I can feel that. Even though I'm like, um, where I'm at, it's summer all year round, right? I'm in Puerto Rico. I'm in this beautiful island. But even though the weather deems out a little bit and you get like a breeze and you can you can notice you can feel the difference and everything around changes you know the mood changes is christmas mood is um, holiday season mood if you don't celebrate christmas that's all right but the mood changes anyways and it is so nice to see how people take the extra time to be more uh, be nicer to one another and, and whatnot and with that in mind I have the show for today we are uh, glad to be here we are thankful for all of you uh, for your support for uh, your social media interactions and we just want to let you know that we are thankful for your support Uh, and, and with that, I want to welcome you to today's show, and I want to invite you to keep reaching out on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, you can find the HBTV app on um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, Twitter. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, as I mentioned before, J.O., L O W X Cholox and let me know what you think, what you will like on the show, what kind of music do you like, what what kind of interviews you, you would like to have us play on the show. That's what we are here for. With that said, again, thank you. We have a great guest to um today on the show. But now we are going to the first music video. This music video Still is a cover. Nah, nah, nigga. Yes. All right, and that was nah, nah. Still Dre by uh, Mr. Billy Albuquerque. And that was so cool. I love, like, live music and, like, you know, the, the hitting of the drums and the intensity. It's so, so cool, uh, especially for me that I grew up on that, like Dr. Dre, Tupac, on the east side, uh, B, Junior Mafia, um Wu-Tang, I just love all of that. I it just takes me back, you know, a whole lot of memories, a lot of mayhem uh, in, in my time. <laughs> And I'm wearing a, you can see the, that's my Boba Fett mixed with uh, some nice art over there waiting for the book of Boba Fett uh, that is coming soon. I'm a geek and I'm proud of it. So yeah, uh, let me know what, what are you watching right now? What kind of uh, shows or TV series are you in or what movies are you waiting for? I'm surely waiting for that new Spider-Man um, No Way Home movie that that's all the expectations right now right is there gonna be one spider-man three spider-mans how many villains are gonna be five six it's all madness it's all crazy oh but actually it's gonna be fun if you are into that kind of uh, mayhem 
uh, talking about that, we're we're switching the pace here a little bit. We are next music video, which is. Before we move to our interview for today, I want to remind you to, uh, if you haven't got the, the HBTV app, uh, go and download that. You can see all the shows, all the content, there's um, film content com coming into the platform, all the creative content that is going to be um, getting into the platform, you, you need to be aware of. There's a lot, not just music, but content creation in general. So go download the HBTV app, um, check them on the different social media platforms, HBTV app on Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok, everywhere basically. And to talk to me and Music Mayhem, that's J-O-L-O-W-X, that's Jolox. And there you can talk to me about everything related to Music Mayhem and to what, you, what do you want on the show, what would you uh, rather have as music-wise or entertainment because part of what we want is to have different other creatives on the show, creative people doing 
uh, films and other stuff for uh, who are creating all their different stuff, you know, uh, influencers, um, filmmakers, uh, video creators, um, every creators on every level. So let us know what would you rather have or prefer to have on the show. With that said, this week we have a very special guest. His name is Sean O'Reilly, and this guy is awesome. He's a self-taught musician, pianist, and harpoonist. No, not the one that, but the one that, you know. <laughs> He plays the, the harp like um, like an angel, and he can sing. You will see after the interview, um, we will go straight into one of his music videos that I want to show you guys. It's from, as I mentioned, Sean O'Reilly, and it's called Shelter from the Storm. It's a live session he recorded, and it's beautiful. So let's go to the interview, let's meet him, and then let's go straight to the video. Let's do that. I hope you all enjoy this as much as I enjoyed recording it. All right, and let's do this. All right, and here we are for our interview with Sean O'Reilly Band. Mr. Sean O'Reilly, thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So, well, let's go straight to the interview. And the first question I always ask the people I interview is, who is Sean? And how do you get into where you at right now? Like at this point of your life with music? Um, all right, so I guess uh, how most people would know me now is I am a singer songwriter. Uh, I play a few instruments, but uh, mostly it's the piano and uh, the pedal harp. And um, I'm a self-taught musician. I never went to music school or anything like that. Um, just as a kid, I mean, my family, pretty much everybody in my family is musical to some degree. We all love music. Uh, I always loved it as a kid. And I guess because I was a little bit more of the um, like nerdy tinkering type, I got more into uh, that side of music, you know, like how it's made. And so I got into playing instruments and composing, recording, all that stuff. Wow. And so you are self-taught, basically? Yeah, yeah. Um, what happened was uh, my mother, uh, she plays piano by ear, you know, in a kind of basic way. And um, when I was a kid, my father plays guitar, uh, again, uh, you know, in a somewhat rudimentary way, not to be rude <laughs> to his talents. Um, but so um, my brother and I, he first started trying to teach us guitar. And um, my brother, who's older than me, was much better than I was. And so then I saw my mom playing the piano by ear, and I, I asked her how she did it, and she just showed me a chord book. And really from there, I just, I just learned for myself, just, you know, sit there for hours and figure out, like, you know, how chords are made and how they change across the piano. And that's I mean, that, that's amazing. I mean, I, I know people who are self-taught, like, on guitar, and um, you know, like uh, maybe playing the drums and whatnot, but I mean, I, I have seen you play and do your live performances, and I would never thought that you you don't have like a like I was thinking you you were like a Berkeley whatever <laughs> like damn. Well, I, I appreciate that. I mean. I think that, um, especially, well, now, you know, growing up in the age of computers, there are so many resources that you're not completely on your own if you want to learn on your own. Um, you know, I had 
before I started looking to the internet, I sort of had figured out generally how music theory works and stuff like that. But you know, like then you could you could log on to any of these YouTube sites and learn about you know, I mean, like yes, jazz yes. specific theory and all that but, stuff. So but I, I bought I bought a guitar two times in my life, twice in different periods. Okay. And I bought like the, the booklet and, and the, you know, learn yourself. And then I went into YouTube. Both times I had to sell the damn thing before I smashed <laughs> it into pieces. Because I tried, I, I, I really did. But at some point it's like, you know, do re mi ama smash you through the wall. <laughs> so, you know, you're awesome. And, you know, it, it's amazing. I didn't know that. And so what makes you go uh, choose the harp? Like, it's a beautiful instrument, but at the same time, it's not an instrument that you see often being played. No. So what makes you look into it and choose the harp? Well, um, so the harp has actually been a bit more recent of a development for me musically, but the truth of it is um, I got into fixing up pianos, particularly. I, I, was, uh, I would rebuild a few. Um, this one behind me is about 50 years old. Um, I didn't have to do much to it, but, but this one I fixed. I fixed more. I sold them. So I got into the habit of, of looking on like old uh, auction sites and, and uh, I found a harp it's back there. Um, it's uh, about a hundred years old. Wow. Um, and I, I thought, well, you know, it's kind of like a piano, maybe I could fix it. And then if I could fix it, maybe I could play it. And so that's really where that came from. Um, that was a few years ago. And then this one here is a very modern idea of harp. So I guess what's interesting about the harp, similar to the piano is the one that's a hundred years old. Um, most of the harps today are basically made the same way. You know, around the 1920s, they felt like they just got it right. And it hasn't changed until this company. Uh, this is a French company. And uh, they made uh, some subtle changes to it. But also, um, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, uh, a strip right here. And those are pickups. So this actually, it can work like a regular harp. Like there's a microphone. You can, you can hear that it, it sounds like a regular harp. But I can also plug it into amps and speakers and pedals. Oh, right. and like an electric guitar sound. So even though it, it's, I think the harp is definitely viewed as like a super uh, classical instrument, there's a, it's becoming much more of a contemporary instrument as well. All right, all right. And <clears throat> um, how do you got into doing this live streaming that I, I see they range, they're, they're basically like, concerts because they they're like over an hour yeah um well because in your um, case i i seen they're they're over like you have been doing that longer than than covid right yes uh i would i start well you know i'm i'm a a, a product of the internet you know I, i grew up with the internet so um i always liked it and and the thing is you know, when I was playing even just the piano, I always hated keyboards. I mean, I like playing out live, I do, but um, when you're used to real instruments, something like a keyboard, no matter how uh, impressive what it does is, you know, or, or its possibilities, it doesn't feel like a real instrument. So, um, and you play differently on them, at least I do. So. Uh, one way that I thought I could play my piano at home that I loved so much for people was to play on the internet. So a while ago, I would start doing just Monday nights. Uh, I would, you know, get like a little webcam and try and figure out how to get my sound going and I would do those. Now when COVID hit, um, I just did it every day for a while. I think for, for, I don't know, a few months, I was doing it every single day. And now I do a live stream um, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And because I am naturally just kind of a nerdy person, I like to get in the weeds, even if I get a little uh, mixed up, you know, I, I got really into uh, trying to use, you know, get better picture, better sound. So I got into lighting and videography and all that sort of thing. So um, 
Like if you go back to the early live streams of COVID, there would be like horrible uh, camera problems and the cameras would look <laughs> terrible. I'm, I'm much happier with where I'm at with the live stream now. But that's so cool because like a lot of people, including, including me, like we move into doing live streaming and like a lot of these stuff after COVID because, you know, the world shut down. And I have, I have had people on the show that they move into stuff like that exclusively because of, you know, the whole pandemic. But um, going through your channel, I noticed that you started before. So for you, it was like, uh, you know, you, you, you premiere on this kind of thing before. It was something that you decided to do because you wanted. And then the world kind of like moved to feed what you were doing, right? Yeah, they were all, they were all suddenly in the same boat as me, yeah. <laughs> For different reasons, but we all ended up there. And something else that I noticed uh, watching you play, it's like, uh, and I think going through the comments of people on, on your YouTube uh, channel, it's like when you're playing either the piano or the harp, you, and I think that it helps us identify and go there with you it's like you are somewhere else it's like you're, you're you move to some other place and you are so into it and you can see like the passion uh, when you play and, and now like how is that for you when you're playing like how how do you feel at that moment because i can see you're not just like looking for the next next note or like trying to complete a task you are you're, you're doing you're making magic brother thank you well i try to um it it depends so um i do do uh, a lot of requests and sometimes i don't know the song and so then i you know i am kind of just looking for the next note or, or trying to hear in my head what's supposed to happen um but in Best case scenario, I have a good idea of what I'm playing. You know, um, it'll be songs I've written or songs I've played a lot. And um, there's an aspect where my hands will generally know what to do. They don't know um, precise notes that are going to happen. But like, if you know the structure of a song and how it's supposed to sound, uh, and you know how an instrument works, then your hands will usually kind of work with you like they'll they'll know the keys and where things are moving um and so yeah when i perform i guess um my aim is not to be perfect but to like uh it's more about expression than perfection so yeah i'm usually trying to be in the mindset of whatever the 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 lyric of the song is talking about you know if i have uh, some kind of idea or interpretation on what that song's about. That's where I try to be. And so as a consequence, I mean, I do make a decent amount of mistakes on the live stream. I mean, if you like me like sort of meltdowns, you can come see the stream, you'll, you'll find something you like. But, um, you know, I have to be okay with that because I'm not trying to be, give out the same performance every night that of a set list that I know by heart. You know, I don't, I don't think people would come back, you know, if I'm, I'm live streaming three, three nights a week and it's just me. You know, I haven't really had the opportunity to have more uh, musicians in here. It's something I'd like to do moving forward. But, you know, since it's just me, I need something, some kind of variation to the sets every night. And you're also a songwriter, right? Yes. How, how is that process about, like, writing... I mean, you yourself taught, you you play, but how that came to be? I mean, you have an amazing voice as well. Thanks. Um, the songwriting, well, so I guess because of the way I learned music, I, I learned it in a more foundational way in that um, 
you know, I think when most people are taught music, they're taught to just learn specific songs. And so they, you know, they, they learn the sequence of notes to make that song, but um, I was learning, um, they call chords, which are basically make up music theory. And um, that's really how most people write songs nowadays, is they'll, they'll match chords with uh, singing lines. So the um, mechanics of songwriting, I actually could recognize probably earlier than somebody who would learn in a more traditional sense. For me, um, and it's still the same way, having a song actually be written, it requires um, an intention on some kind of message. So, in, so in, I guess another way to put it is like, I, you know, I could play, I could just, I think you can hear this, you know, I could go. You know, I could write some kind of melody, but unless I have an idea of some kind of lyrical ideas that I want to convey, I would forget that in 10 minutes. And so um, I, was, I was a teenager when I wrote my first song, but I, I remember it was a long time of just writing melodies and stuff that, and since I never had, you know, some kind of message to express, uh, they would just disappear. And so it wasn't until I was a little bit older and felt like I wanted to say something, maybe not the most profound thing, but something that, you know, songs would really stick around and become songs. And it's so cool. So, okay, and how can people, like, where can they reach you through your social media or and your YouTube channel uh, and, you know, for your live streaming? Where can people go to see those streamings and reach you? So I try, I try to be everywhere on the Internet. Um, the places where I am most available, as in like if somebody wanted to message me, um, my Facebook inbox is fairly organized. Um, my Instagram DMs, you can slide into my DMs. I usually can see those all right. And then um, I have a website, seanoreillyband.com, and there's an email, and I, I try to answer those. Um, but, I mean, I'm, I'm everywhere. I, I post a lot on YouTube. Um, uh, the live stream will go out to YouTube, it goes out to Facebook Live, it goes out to Instagram, it goes out to Twitch, and I've actually started getting out to Reddit. All right, um, you are everywhere. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I try to get it everywhere. I mean, if, if you want to get in touch with me, there are some sites that I frequent more than others, but I try to, I try to meet people where they are, I guess. All right. So uh, what is the Facebook, Instagram pages where, where people can find? Oh, yeah. So again, I, I, I got pretty lucky. Um, I, I mean, I guess sort of the unfortunate consequence of being Sean O'Reilly band is, is people usually expect a band. And lately, that's not been the case. But the good part is, is there's been no other. So on all of my social media, if you search Sean O'Reilly band as one word, it'll be there. The only exception is um, like the streaming stuff, Spotify and all that. Uh, I have an older album that shows up as Sean O'Reilly band, but all of the new stuff uh, is just Sean O'Reilly. If you're going uh, okay. to listen yeah, to the Spotify. Spotify, Sean O'Reilly, mm -hmm. everywhere else is Sean O'Reilly band. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for being here with us today. It's been awesome having you. I, I'm a fan of your music now, man. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And it's been awesome having you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And I don't know if, if this is abusing you, but can we have you play a little bit just to take, you know, for, for take, you, take us out of the interview? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean... I don't, well, wait. Um, Whatever you want, like, you know, just a short bit. Yeah, let me, let me just. Uh... I know we didn't talk about this, but I mean, <laughs> it's there, you're, you're there. Um, you know what, here, wait, let me just turn on. If I turn on my pedals. Now, the one thing um, I got to tell you is, my harp is probably not in tune, but it's what I have that's actually set up 
to kind of be heard. Uh, let me just... All right. Um, you might actually end up hearing some extra effects that I won't. So, hopefully this works. Uh, I guess, so this song um, is called Your Heart Inside My Heart. The lyrics were actually lifted kind of vaguely from an E.E. E. Cummings poem. Um, so we'll just play as much as I can do here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Sean O'Reilly, everybody. Thank you so, so much, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. That was awesome. Thank you, man. I'll see you, talk to you later. Thanks.
love that go and serve you a little more. When this life seems a pretty little chore, you can't tell if you're just tired or bored. You wanna go home. Oh, oh, oh. I told you he was a great musician. Told you he was talented. He learns that by himself. That's pretty amazing. And the whole heart being able to be turned basically into an electric harp. That's freaking awesome. Like I just love, maybe because I love filmmaking so much, I love uh when when you can use classical instruments into modern compositions of music so i just love all of that and him even performing for us a little bit and then 
jumping into the music video that was crazy guys i i just love performers uh and i love when they give their talent so freely to us uh and, and it was just something beautiful and i appreciate that so thanks to our guest sean o'reilly thanks to all of you for week after week slowly but surely been uh, growing with us thanks for your um, comments for um, your compliments for your uh, suggestions and again this is growing this we we are learning as we go but again thank you happy holidays we'll be here next friday with more music mayhem again hbtv app everywhere look for it every social media download the app jolox j o l o l in spanish <laughs> j o l o w x j o l o w x that's jolox facebook instagram basically everywhere que pasen un buen fin de semana you all have a wonderful weekend and i'll see you next friday this has been another music mayhem on the back see you next week yeah